Morning folks, hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, right, okay, uh, Fabriano 130 pound paper, 15 inches by 11. A very good paper for practicing on because it's cheaper, than, it's about or much cheaper than the uh, artist brands. <coughs> but um, with a bit of practice, you can you can tame the paper so it doesn't go into too many cauliflowers. Uh, it does go muddy quite a, a lot if you're not careful. But uh, it's a uh, it's a good paper for for demonstrating. Uh, but I, I wouldn't uh, recommend it to, for uh, good good detailed work. All detailed. I said the word detailed. No. Uh, but that's all I can really say about it. You, you, you'll be able to see. And now I'm going to give the paper a bit of a bit of a wet. Always, I always paint wet in wet anyway, regardless. Now I, I sort of do this sort of uh, Ron Ranson, not what he does, but what he did because he's been dead several years. Um, but he, he he was responsible for the for the hakes and the development of the hakes. Uh, and I first saw saw a demonstration video or a VHS video oh, back in oh, 40 years ago. Time's gone, time flies quickly. Uh, especially when you waste waste all the time doing pictures. Uh, and I, I up, up until I, then I was using sables or squirrel, small smallish squirrel brushes, try to paint in a Chinese style with uh, hitting, hit, like wet, wet and dry. Uh, but when I saw Ron Ranson's video, that changed my life uh, in regards to watercolour painting. Not oil, it doesn't have any influence on oil. It's a totally different brush. It's soft, it's made from goat hair. They play about a bit, they split here and there. Uh, the bristles they come together, but once you get used to it, it takes a while. You, 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 it's not an overnight sort of thing. I, I did probably 50 or 60 paintings, some reasonable, some not, uh, before I actually produced any reasonable work. But I still, I still use it. Well, they're not it, I mean, I've had loads of them. They don't last forever, but they're not expensive. So, there we go. Right, uh, so, first thing, I provide a background of uh, raw sienna. It's getting a bit hard, this stuff. Now. Just ordered another, uh, for, uh, a 200ml uh, tube of burnt sienna, but not for wall colour for my oil painting because I love oil painting. I love the effects you can get with it. I'm still learning, but we're always. If you ever get to where you think you should be, you haven't. You just you just make advances all through your painting life. And I'm speaking from experience. I've been doing this for 50 years. 50 yeah, for over 50, yeah, 50 years. Uh, we're growing old together, me and Fabriano, £130 paper. I'll just give another clip, because I talk too much. When you want to see the actual painting. Now, into that, just the... Just the uh, bit, bit, of, bit of... Uh, Don't overwork this because it'll go green. But put it on and leave it. The, yeah, oh, it's pouring the rain where it was. But we do need it out of other beans so, because some lovely, lovely beans. Oh. Just 
put some water. This all dries lighter than when you put it on. So don't worry about it. You have to compensate for that. Uh, right, okay. Now, what I'm going to do is to uh, dry that, the hair dryer. All right, here we go. Headphones off or mutual sound. Go! Okay, uh, that is the paper does uh, expand when it's wet, but you don't need to pre stretch it. I mean, if you want to, you can, but I gave it up as a bad job, it just wasn't worth the time. Uh, bad language, <laughs> see all used to go wrong. No, just, just just four clips and just put them here and there, just put it tight. Right, now then, we're going to have, uh, uh, what do I, I don't know, I was thinking of doing uh, just a, a, a landscape rather than a, one with water, uh, with, with uh, a lake in. So let's, uh, Right, I'll, I'll tell you the colours before I... I've got a cadmium yellow light, that's artist quality, very, very brilliant, um, a lovely... Uh, it's the only one I've got that's an artist quality, B uh, a raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber. I use burnt umber if I'm doing a beach type of scene with a bit of raw sienna. It makes a, quite a nice sand colour. Uh, Payne's grey and burnt sienna so burnt sienna ultramarine uh, and the yellow are my main colors uh, but if you're a beginner don't go out and buy tins of paint or paint boxes that you use at school with little brushes you want the largest brushes you can get hold of that that will behave themselves like these no hakes uh, but you, you, with the, with the pre-filled tin, uh, tins of, of watercolours, like with the, the, the little blocks, uh, you won't use most of the colours, you'll get confused and you'll give up. Better just to use a tray like that, a butcher's tray, the food display tray, get them anywhere in a, in a hardware store, uh, and just a few colours. I mean, it's up to you, you can always add colour colours uh, if you want to, but get experience first. I used to, I did a oh, year yeah, of painting Venice, Venice oil paintings for a gallery. It wasn't too successful, but I, I did get quite a bit of money for it. Uh, £250 a canvas, unframed. But it was an exercise and I learnt a lot, particularly about I don't like doing buildings. Uh, especially yeah, <laughs> Venetian ones. We've got so much, so much detail. Um, but I used probably eight to ten colours. I had two blues, uh, cobalt, well, what, three sometimes. Uh, what did I have? Cobalt. I, I kept away from Prussian blue. It's far too uh, strong. Uh, it's a real stain, uh, but uh, I, I did. I learnt a lot, and I did use more colours, but I didn't squeeze them out in great big blobs. So I wasn't going to use. So be, be stingy with your paint. Otherwise, it'll cost you money. I've just, I, in the last uh, month, I've I've spent out about sixty pounds on. Uh, 200 mil tubes of Winton uh, uh, oil paints, but even even these ones are getting the uh, the watercolour ones are getting expensive. But anyway, enough of that. Let's uh, let's put in a bit of a 
a nice sword of green. Shouldn't really have put that uh, coat in there, but let's uh, just get a bit of Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey with, with the yellow makes a wonderful green. Uh, we can just go in. Right, okay, now I'm going to put trees on there. That's a, sort of a hill. Uh, keep it simple, stupid, kiss. Now, um, we have some a bit of Payne's Grey, a touch of that yellow, a bit of blue, a bit of Payne's Grey, a touch of the, the yellow, and we can do. I've got to be careful with it, so I'll dry that. I don't want this paint going into that paint because it'll just merge and explode. Someone mentioned in a comment that uh, my sound was uh, not very good, but this is a fairly new Canon, not Canon, a Panasonic camcorder that I paid quite a lot of money for on eBay. Well, no, not on eBay. I went direct to to a dealer, uh, for a camera specialist for it. Um, it's a lovely, beautiful thing. But I sometimes get lost in the painting as I'm doing it, and I start a sentence and then. I just sort of go into a dream while I'm painting. Does that make a noise? But anyway, um, that's what I do. So let's put a few, few distant trees in here. So you're just using the corner of the brush, but try not to make them look like uh, cabbages, like that one. That's uh, not a good one. So just just alter the shapes. So I just want to get the background in first. Very, very light touch, barely touching the paper. Okay, so there's three trees in the distance. They will dry lighter. Let's just connect that. I'm listening to my head on headphones on my, on my phone, uh, talking about roads and the uh, the wildfires sort of breaking out all over the place. Um, <laughs> we're getting all the rain over here. I would love some of our rain, but uh, I think one of the fires apparently was uh, started uh, was an arson. Arson things. Let's just do some more then. Fire started deliberately. Look at those lights, huh? Right, I've gone a bit over there. I, I can texture that. I'll go over it. Um, right now, we want to start building up some oak trees. Oak trees. Nice bit of Payne's grey. Bit of burnt sienna. Bit of blue. Bit of yellow. Look at that. Wonderful yellowy green. 
just by mixing that uh, artist colour there. So we want to uh, come up here. Come up here. It's a bit, bit, bit dark, a bit thicker than that. Bit of shadow in there. Pushes in. Of course, it's texturing, not detailing. This detail tends to lock you up because you have to do it right. I think I'm going to take this up a little bit higher. I'm just feeling my way around this for more birds here now. There. The paint is grey. Of course, you do need to um, learn how to paint with uh, a light touch, leaving holes in the Foley's for birds to fly through, bird holes, bird holes. Nice one, a little bit of yellow in there. Um, we'll carry on with that, we'll go further over. So we'll call this a tutorial for beginners or oh. those are as other knowing says uh, beginners and, and uh, intermediate. Where the bristles and the brush are holding together too much. Now that's gone a bit too much like I didn't want. Okay, and we've got clumps of trees there. We want to put uh, some uh, chunks in there. You can just go oh, just put them in if you want. Don't have to. A little goes a long way. And do some of those those background trees. 
I'm not using uh, white. Right, okay, let's uh, keep it simple and we'll uh, put in some nice green. So have a bit of burnt sienna in there. Let's mm -hmm. move this up a bit. Reminds me, there's an in our shower room, there's a, a cobweb on the ceiling I've been ordered to uh, remove. Right, I'll give that a dry. I'm not going to do much more. Uh, so take your headphones off. Go. Okay, now you can get better shapes from these trees if you do use a, a sable brush used on its edge. You can get these are more like it, uh, but uh, anyway, for a piece of resistance, we'll get a rigger and and. Okay, put your signature on, always do that. Even if you don't like it, someone else might. Right, now we're going to clip, put a bit of tape on there. Off. Then I'm going to do a I do an oil painting demo. I think. Uh, oops. Well there we are, just a very very simple watercolour, let's just uh, uh, zoom out a bit. There we are, couldn't be more simple than that. Uh, you can, what well, you can do, uh, which I will, And we'll get a bit of a bit of blue, a bit of paint grey, and then we can just it's a bit of shadow. Oh, 
Oh, so we've added a bit of shadow. Okay, so there you are, folks. That's, uh, that's about four I've done in the last two or three days, I think. Um, I quite like that. I, I like that bit. Probably this is a bit of an afterthought, but it, it just goes to show that don't overwork. But this is a bit overworked. Uh, so a small tree with a large brush. Uh, but uh, with practice, you get there. And uh, I tell people, I, I didn't quit when I couldn't do it. A lot of people take it up and think, they buy all the stuff, they have a go, and then they realise that they couldn't do it. And what they're doing is rubbish. Of course it's rubbish, you haven't done enough of it. You learn, you learn to do it. We're not talking about great masters here, we're talking about ordinary people who want to learn to paint, and, and uh, give up before they even get anywhere. I've, I've spent huge sums of money on papers and paints and stuff over, over 50, 60 years. 60 years? I'm not that old. 50 years. And I end up with this. Okay, folks, I'll be back, back to my, my love of art is oil painting. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.